Hello there and welcome to the Mindset Alchemy podcast. I'm Janine Kathleen, your host, and I am so delighted to have you join me here. Today we're going to be talking about alignment, where we're in alignment and where we're out of alignment. Last week's podcast we spoke about when the heart has gone out of something. And what happens then is we step out of alignment. We step off the best part of best path for ourselves and we take ourselves out of alignment. Now I have done this quite a few times both when I'm out walking and also in my life. I go oh look this person's doing this that or the next thing and they seem to be having a lot of success. Let me try that. It is out of my skill set. It's out of my zone of genius or my zone of excellence and guess what it crashes and burns and then I go see I knew I couldn't do it and then I go no Janine and I pick myself by the scruff of my neck and I say you are being inauthentic what does authentic look like for you what is your uniqueness Janine where can we go with this and then I normally pick up my pen and my journal and I go hello soul hello body where can you show me a better way for me today? What is the best way for me to move forward in this endeavor, that undertaking, this relationship, that understanding? And I sit and I journal it out and the ideas come, they flow, and then I read it out loud back to myself. Sometimes I've even been known to put it on a voice note and then I play it back at a, a later stage. So it's not me talking it's <laughs> cell phone recording talking and all of this then shows me where to get back in alignment and to own my power my zone of genius my zone of competence and what my soul would like me to do in that moment in time to grow to expand to rest and to just be working with energy can be interesting because I see this in so many people where they use their energy to work with their clients. I learned very early on to work with the energy of my soul team, of Mother Earth, of Earth magic, of source energy. I even have trees and plants. And when my um, Goldstein was alive, he would support me as well. In fact, I still feel like he's supporting me when I work with clients and on projects. The important thing is, what is your uniqueness? Where has it matured? Where has it shifted and changed? And where has it grown into a greater depth? A more, um, if I can say you've added value. Because remember, that's what appreciation is. We add value to our life. So where have you appreciated in your life, in your journey? And where are you actually applying it? I know, I know. It takes sitting down, being quiet, being still. And other times you can be driving along and all of a sudden, there you have it. The answer pops in. This is where I love voice notes because then I can voice note it to myself and it's there for me to then go and put it in my journal and work with it. For me, one of my uniquenesses is helping people see a better path, a greater future, to be able to untangle that web of, what others expect of you and what you expect of you and what is actually true for you. And I have found in my life that I require somebody else very often to help me with it. And I have several accountability partners. I have a coach and I work daily with myself on understanding, is this aligned? Am I taking this on from someone else? Or is this truly what I'm meant to do at this point in time? Because if I'm taking that energy on from somebody else, that's their path, their purpose. Where does it link to my path and my purpose? And if it's the link is unavailable, then I return the energy to them or the idea or the concept with love and consciousness attached. With social media, it's very easy to scroll and say, oh, maybe I can try this, maybe I can try that. The first thing to work with is body and business. Is this aligned with us now? Is this for us? If so, what are we to do with it? 
where does it fit into our uniqueness and where are we to explore it at a deeper level. Now, to just circle back to that maturing into our uh, uniqueness, we do do this. And very often we then carry on working at the level of, say, two or three years ago, rather than having caught ourselves up. What would it take for you to sit down and say, where have I matured? Where have I added more to my life? Where have I appreciated in my life through adding the value of reading, courses, better understandings? And where am I being asked to apply it, work with it, share it, and deal with it? Very often there's a deal with it side with it as well. And that's where people like myself as a personal leadership um, guide comes in because sometimes I can see your vision a little bit better than you can. Most times, though, you know deep inside yourself what you're looking for, where you're going, and what you are exploring. Now, when we can let go of the expectations and start working with intentions, we tap into an energy field that we then imprint on. And as we imprint on it, we get to choose. Am I imprinting lower vibrational outcomes or am I looking to improve and receive and allow higher vibrational outcomes? Something I've learned is there's no good or bad. There's good, better, and best. And we choose to work with the good, better, and best. And if we dislike what we have, go and look at what we like. I go and say, okay, hmm, let me see. What else is possible? Where can I receive something else? What else can I receive? And what does it look like? I have board meetings with my business while I'm walking. Uh, Janine, Kathleen, and I get to discuss what she's going to do, what I'm going to do, and what we're going to do together. It's a fun way of working things out. It's also a very great way of standing back and being the observer of what you are creating and whether you would like to have the results or you would like to shift them. You then get to make the choice and take action. Because one of the things about intention, you set the intention, you get into the energy, you step into the vibrational frequency of it, and then you take the actions. Now, I have found in my life that um, the first initial actions I take may just be that action. And because I've taken the action, I'm then guided into being effective in the action I take. So it's to get going, it's to start moving, and it's to work with it and explore with it. I have noticed I do take longer to process and do things than some of my friends, and that's okay. I love them for who they are and what they can do, and I've learned to love myself for who I am and what I do. I've also learned to love myself for when I'm avoiding things and to call myself on it and say, hey, Janine, What's going on here? Alternatively, when I have my board meeting with Janine Kathleen, she says to me, Janine, you are reneging on we, what we agreed, what your part of our success is all about. I've brought my part. Where are you going to bring your part? And I get to say, okay, face the fear because it's the signpost towards success and sorting out whatever trauma and drama and stuff it's um layered over and sorting that out so that I can move forward and that I get to choose to move forward and something I've learned to do as well is to say I see myself taking action on this I feel that when I take this action these are the results and I start feeling in my body what are the results coming forward what I'm doing with it and where I can go with it and what this does is it helps me to understand at a much better level where the intention, what intention I'm imprinting on that energy field and what the vibrational capacity of it is. Because as I was discussing last week, sometimes the energy goes out of the project and it's to know the heart goes out of the project and it's to know and understand that there are times to let things go or to shift and change them so that we can grow. And it's by exploring it, looking at it, and working with it that we are able then to process it at a deeper level, a faster level, 
or a more um, impartial level. So we can be impartial, take the emotion, take the, the feeling out of it and see what would this bring to me? Is it something, will it add to my life? Will it take away from my life? And when we begin become more curious and begin to explore it, we then can step back and be the observer as well as the creator. For me, it has definitely been a process. I've loved exploring things like human design, my gene keys, personalities, I love languages, uh, environmental influences, so many things all play a part. And as we learn and expand and grow step by step, we allow ourselves to see where to put our heart, where to love ourselves enough to let go and where to work with people and where to walk a path that is aligned to us and let them take their journey. People, I would really enjoy finding out about what you feel, where you feel it, and do you feel you are still in alignment or have you stepped off your path? I would love to help you. I have a wonderful program called Thinking by Design. If you're interested, reach out. I have also I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching where I help you see when you're drowning in BS, the belief systems that are keeping you stuck and where to let go of them so that you can step back into that path of aligned action, of that beautiful vision you have for your life and ways of growing and being. Looking forward to hearing from you and I would love it if you could leave a five, five star rating or a comment. Have a beautiful day. Remember to like and subscribe. Bye-bye.